Welcome back everybody to a quick series on the fit out and little mods we've been doing to our Ranger Wild Track. This will help anyone out if you're looking to do a real budget, removable DIY fit out in the tub of your ute. It's really, really interesting, economical, and it all fully pulls out with no mounting fixtures at all. So come along as we show you how. So a little bit of context on this that I touched on in the U versus SUV video is that we want to keep this as a ute. We want to have a multi-purpose vehicle that does everything. It's a daily commuter, you can use it on weekends, you can take it camping, you can tow with, it needs to do everything. So for now, we've just done the budget DIY solution to a number of things. And I think that will really interest a lot of viewers out there because a lot of us don't have 20 or 30 grand to throw at a ute fit out big wheels and tires and all that sort of gear so i think this will be really really interesting so let's get into it and then i'll show you the multi-purpose setup we've got here because there's about three or four different combinations you can do so what you see here is actually the full stage one setup so i've got the false floor in i've got the fridge on a slide but the big key of this is it all comes out and it doesn't bolt into the tray at all we can then strip it down a number of levels so that the fridge comes out. We've got another infill section that fits in here and it's easy to make at home with simple DIY tools. The carpet is really easy and I'll show you a few tips and tricks there. And some things I've got underneath it to stop it all sliding around. Now my Evercool fridge that I've had for years and years and years, it was about 100 mil too high. So I went on the hunt for an, again, an economical fridge to put in the back of the ute because we don't really use it all that much. So I ended up with this which is a little bit bulky and big, but it's an Austral 45 litre. Doing all my measurements, I thought I had enough clearance, but once you put the cover and everything on, it was still incredibly tight. Now this video isn't about the fridge, but it created a bit of a problem I needed to solve. And I'm all about solving problems, so that's what we've done, and I'll show you as part of this video. So I obviously put it on an Austral slide because these fridges are a little bit wide, so they don't fit on, say, a King slide. But the one advantage of this slide is it only has one lock on it. You've got this other slide lock you can put over once you're in transit, but to open and close it, it's a one-handed job, which makes it really, really easy. And for me, even though it was a little bit more expensive, that was quite appealing, because sometimes you've got stuff in your hand, such as beer coolers, and you want to rock up and just be able to pull it out. And it works perfectly for that use. The one issue I came across was that I wanted to put a false floor in here, which is what we're getting onto. And to put it on the false floor, as I would normally do, it didn't clear the top of the cover. So I've had to be a little bit smart here and come up with a solution where it all clicks together, slots over the top of itself to hold everything in so you can open it up and it doesn't go flying and move around everywhere. It's a really tight fit in the back of the tub, so when you close the tailgate, basically locks it all together and it works really well. So how I generally go about assembling this is I put the fridge slide in first and then I slide the false floor in over the top of it. So I get this roughly into position, which is pretty easy to slide it in. Sits around about there. And then we get our false floor and it just slots in over the top. It's really easy. Just like that. It's so easy and simple to do, it takes two seconds. To put the fridge in, I usually slide the slide out, put the fridge on, strap it down, including the EcoFlow, and then you can just slide it all in and you're ready to roll. And then to pull everything out, you can either pull the false floor over, or we're gonna slot in the infill panel now, so I can just pull the slide out. It will move the floor a little bit. Pull it out of the way. And then we can put our false floor section in to have a nice carpeted boot area. And of course, if your fridge was low enough, you wouldn't have to worry about this little thing. But this is a solution for those that have a fridge that sort of fits but doesn't fit. And how you go about solving that problem. So just quickly, how all this works for those that are interested, is that the fridge slide is pretty standard. I've put some angles around that edge and this edge that clip in under the floor. And I'll show you all that once we get into this. Our fridge sits on the fridge slide, as does our EcoFlow River Pro. And the EcoFlow is essentially acting as a dual battery system. It simply plugs into the side of the vehicle, so it charges and keeps the fridge running while we're in transit. And then when we get to site, I've got an Anderson lead just here. I'll just tuck this down the side, 
pull it out when I need to, plug in my solar panels, and that can recharge the EcoFlow and keep the fridge running when we're away. It's really simple and easy. This just tucks away. Down into there, you wouldn't even know it's there, and it means everything's here ready to go when we're out camping and traveling out and about. So that's essentially how it works. But you'll see, I can just slide this back in. Cable follows it, the EcoFlow goes with it, and you just slide it easily in and out as you need to use it while you're out and about and camping, or even on a day trip, to be honest. It's really, really good. You can have all your drinks and food in here, and it's no drama at all. So anyway, what I'll do is I'll pull all this out, and then we'll get into this real simple DIY false floor and how easy it is for you to do at home, just like this, with a few tips and tricks along the way as well. And it's all about keeping it simple DIY and helping everyone out there. So let's get into it. Okay, let's start with the standard U-tub. We've got the factory liner here because we've got a wild track, and to be honest, it works pretty well. The only issue I have with it that everyone has with these tub liners is that they're really slippery. So if you're using this as a daily vehicle, you'll find things just slide around everywhere. The first solution would be to put some dividers in, and Ford do actually put these little slots where you can run some timber through and put some little makeshift dividers, and there's a number of companies out there that do make divider kits for them, but they're extremely expensive. At the end of the day, you can make something that goes into there really, really cheaply. So the stage one solution that I have for this, just for daily purposes, is to fit a rubber ute liner. Now this is just a basic one I've got off eBay. The grunt ones are actually really, really good and they look nice. They haven't got that shiny finish of them. They're sort of like the floor mats that you get inside the cabin itself, but they're a little bit more. So I just went a simple, I think it was like 120 bucks. It works really well. You just simply put it in. It's all laser cut. So my idea at the time was I now have a template for the floor when I want to make it. But I've gone down a slightly different route there. So I didn't really need this, but at the end of the day, if you wanted to make a full shape floor to go in here, you do have a bit of a template if you buy one of these because they're laser cut to suit the floor. There's a few little things you want to look out for when you do that because you've got the rounded corners of the tub that you then need to sort of work with in regards to the template where it doesn't really pick that up. But this is a really good solution. We can put all the school bags and everything in the back and it does actually stop things moving around really well. It's robust, you don't have to worry about it getting dirty. At the end of the day, you can just hose it off or give it a wash if you want to. And it's a, quite a good solution as opposed to just having the standard plastic liner where things do have a tendency to slide around. But if we pull this out, we'll get onto the proper part of a nice basic custom fit out to really help you out if you're looking to use this as a tourer, a bit of a camping rig or something like that and you don't want to put big drawers or anything like that in it, but you want to put a fridge slide in it and you don't want to bolt through the floor, which was one of our main things. We didn't want to go hacking into this too much because it's a brand new vehicle. So I'll pull this out now and we'll get into the real bit. Now, the interesting thing is that between the wheel arches is 1200 mil. So I went down to Bunnings and I got a sheet of 19 mil form ply, which I love using. It's got enough thickness in it. that has got a bit of weight and it doesn't deform or deflect or anything. It's really easy to work with and it's got that nice finish on the top of it, even though we're going to carpet it. it means the underside's all nicely finished as well. So you have a few different options with size. For us, that works perfectly in here is I got a sheet of 1200 by 1800. And I measured out so that I could get it cut while I was down there that the length was 1430. So I actually got that cut so I could fit it in the back and bring it home while I was down at Bunnings because I do a cut for free. So that makes it easy. You get a nice square cut on it and you can simply just put this in without having to do anything to a point. And that's where a few little tips come into play. So let's go inside and I'll show you how I went about making this floor and a few little improvements I've made to get it all fitting around the rounded portions of the tub liner. So some tips and tricks to help you out along the way. And then even though I've got this made, I haven't actually done the infill section here. So I'll show you how we go about putting the carpet on and a few other little bits and pieces I'm doing to get this all to fit together that you might wanna use in your particular fit out as well. So let's head inside the shed and get into all the nuts and bolts. So for most that are following along from home, you'll simply have a big rectangle that you're inserting down in between your wheel wells, running from the front wall of the tub through to the rear of the tailgate. So when the tailgate shuts, it sort of compresses it all in, keeps it all nice and tidy and it doesn't move around. If your wheel wells are a little bit wider, then you probably want to think about 
it moving from side to side because the last thing you want is it slamming from side to side while you're traveling along. But I think in most utes, you'll probably actually need to cut the actual width of it down a little bit to fit in between those wheel tubs. If you've got a ute without a liner, then again, you'll have extra clearance on the side. So take all those things into account, do a lot of measurements, and then find the right size board that will fit your particular application. Now, I would suggest you use plywood wherever you can. Do not use MDF or particle board, really. MDF is incredibly heavy for what it is and it's not moisture resistant. So if you get any moisture, water, condensation in, it'll swell up, it'll go moldy, and it's not very good for you. You always wanna use a quality marine grade plywood, or I do like to use the form ply, because it's got a little bit of thickness, you can screw into it, it's stable, it doesn't sort of deform and deflect, and you got that nice black finish, like on the top of the workbench here. And this has lasted the test of time with no dramas at all. The only thing when you go to carpet it, which we'll get into, you want to rough up the surface and get rid of the wax finish off it so you can adequately bond onto the actual surface of the marine ply. But that's essentially the approach that I took. Now just to confirm the length if you're trying to replicate this and put it in the back of a next gen wild track, the actual length is 1445 millimeters. So I was out five millimeters when I did that quick measurement in the back of the ute. But taking into account the carpet, 1445 is a real neat snug fit in the tray of the wild track. So we're obviously missing this whole section through here where I've got the cutout. In most cases, you'll actually trim this whole board. You wouldn't make the cutout in it. Put the carpet on, and then you'd simply bolt your fridge slide down onto it. Now, if you've got it all tightly fitted in, like what I just explained, it shouldn't move around too much. And in reality, the weight of all of this will generally take the cantilever of the fridge slide when it goes back out without having to bolt the whole thing down. If you wanted to, I would actually run an angle along the back edge that goes along the front wall of the tub and fix it in like that. Or I've got another solution in the Ranger, for example, with the tub liner where they've got a tie down point on either side. I would bolt an angle into the side here that goes up to that tie down point and that'll hold the front corners down so that when the fridge slide goes out, it doesn't want to flick it up, but it hasn't really been an issue for us. It was just something I thought of that we might need to address through the operation of it. But my two cents worth with anything like this is just keep it simple. Don't overthink it, just keep it nice and simple. Now, obviously I've skipped ahead and this is all cut out and carpeted, but this here is the cutout section that I'm going to make my infill panel with. So this is the section I cut out to put the fridge slide in. And we'll use this as a bit of an example. I've got some other footage on how we went about it, but I'll go through, finish this all off, carpet it, just to show you the general process. But I essentially went about the process by putting the cut down 1200 by 1445 mil sheet into the back of the tub without any modifications at all. And that way you can look into the corners and see where you need to add a curve and how it generally fits. You'll note that the rolled sections of the tray liner actually make it so that the 1200 width doesn't quite sit down flush on the floor. So what I've actually done is gone through and rounded off the corners. Now, you can use anything as a template, really. This is a lid of some screws that I've got, and it felt about the right diameter to actually work around the corners of the tub. So I simply put this onto the corner of the plywood, traced around it, and used my jigsaw to cut the corners off the plywood. Now that actually gets it sitting into the back wall fairly well. You'll also note that as I said outside, I've decided to delete the wings off the side, but you could always use the little cutoffs that you've got to make little infill wings that fit in this section here. But for now, we're just focusing on the floor section itself because that's what I needed to actually get this set up up and running in the week before we went away. So it was a bit of a time crunch, but I just wanted to get the fridge in and running before we took off on that trip to Hat Head. If we flip this onto its side, and you probably can't see it here, but again, I've got some other footage. This is the bottom side and this is the top side. One thing I've done is I've actually gone around with the router with a curved chamfer bit on it and rounded off the perimeter of the board so it will actually sit down into the curve of the tub liner. And that actually made a really big difference. So you can see here that I've gone around and run the router around the bottom side. So you've got that real nice radius on it to sit down into the tub liner. 
And what we'll do is we'll wrap the carpet down and around that and staple it along this bottom line. And that's what actually gets it all looking fairly professional and nicely finished. On the top side, which is what we'll need to do on this piece, is I've used a smaller chamfer bit to actually finish off the edges all the way around. So they've got a bit of a nice rounded radius to wrap that carpet around. So you're not trying to wrap it around the tight 90 degree or sharp cut corners of the board itself. It just helps the carpet to flow around. Now when it comes to carpets, I actually got mine from Bunnings. It's this nice charcoal carpet that's, you know, it got a little bit of a fleck in it. So if it gets a bit of dirt in it, you don't notice it so much. Definitely don't go a straight black or something like that. You want something with a bit of a speckle through it so that any marks or stains sort of get hidden a little bit. But the problem with the stuff that you get from Bunnings is it's got, and it's hard to show on camera, but it's got like this sort of harder backing on it. And that is actually good because when you put the glue on it, you don't have to worry about it. Sometimes it'll, if you saturate it too much, it'll seep through to the top surface. So it sort of seals it off a little bit. But when you're actually trying to fold it and wrap it around the corners, it's a little bit too stiff. So I'd recommend if you're sourcing carpet, go through an upholstery supply warehouse. There's a number of them around and you can buy the carpet that's a little bit softer on the back. You used to have it so that you could stretch it three ways. Actually, there's a car builder's fabric, which is really good. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link down in the description of the carpet that I'd recommend to use for this. There's been some ads floating around where they fit out the inside of a van. So that's the kind of stuff you wanna use because it just makes it easier that you can stretch and bend it like a vinyl around the board so you can actually get a really nice finish on the corners. So to run the edges around, I've got this, uh, and I'll take it out and do a bit of B-roll to show you, this uh, small chamfered router bit in a finishing router, I would call it. It's not a full router, it's just this nice cordless unit that I got from Ryobi, as opposed to my full plunge router, which is corded. This you can take outside, you don't have to worry about any cords or anything like that. But you just want to set it down so you get a nice, I would say, 5 mil radius on the top edge of the board. You run it around all the way around the outside and that'll make it a lot easier to finish the carpet onto the board itself. So we'll go and do this now, then we'll come inside, put the carpet on. I'll show you the best way to do that that I found anyway with a few tips and tricks there. And then in my application, I actually want to put some flat bar on the bottom of this, which is replicating the angle that I've put on my slide so that this infill panel will lock under my floor once you put it in, in place of the fridge slide. So it's just a simple case of clamping this board down onto some saw horses, if you've got them around, or you could even use milk crates or something like that. You probably don't necessarily need to clamp it down, but it makes it a lot easier. And then you just simply run this router around to give a nice finished edge to the board that you've cut out. Now, in our case, we're obviously doing this infill panel, but if you're just doing a false floor installation, it'll just be a huge, great big rectangle to fit in the floor of your tub. Make sure you wear your eye and ear protection, and you really should have work boots on as well. Don't use thongs. So that was pretty easy. Make sure you do both sides so you can wrap it all the way around. And don't forget to give the top and bottom a quick sand with a palm sander. Just to rough it up a little bit and get rid of that wax finish off it, just make sure that anything you bond onto it will work really well. I'm actually putting a layer of foam on the underside, so I'm gonna do both sides as well. So we've got our finished panel here. It's all been sanded off, all the corners have been rounded. And if, obviously if you're doing a bigger version, you'd probably be doing this on your shed floor or garage floor. I've only got a small piece, so it makes it easier for me to do it on the workbench. I just need to try not to make a mess on it. So getting into the carpet side of it. I pre-cut this when I was doing the other section of floor and I've got around about eight centimetres hanging off. That allows me to wrap it over and staple it all down without too many dramas at all. You're better to have too much overhang than not enough. You can always come around with a knife and trim it all off once you're all done to make it all nice and tidy. Whereas if it's too short and you can't quite get it over, it makes it a little bit hard. Now before we get into this, one thing you do need is a good quality staple gun and some heavy duty staples. Uh, I think Ryobi even has a battery powered staple gun now, but I've had this for years, so that's what I'm going to use, along with the staples I've had for years as well. But you might get away with not stapling it down if you glue it and sort of shove a whole heap of weight on it to make sure that glue bonds. And it's really hard to do these corners without a staple gun, because you want to pull it all nice and tight and get it as neat as you possibly can. 
The other thing you need, obviously, is some contact adhesive. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the spray adhesives. I find they generally, especially in the heat, let go. So it might be fine for a little while, but it'll eventually all come off. And I did cheat on my van when I did that. I used spray adhesive because I've got carpeted end panels, but at the end of the day, that has eventually failed. Uh, if you use contact adhesive, really, that's what they use to laminate bench tops together. It's awesome stuff. I know a lot of upholsterers will use basically the same stuff, but actually spray it on, but it's the actual type of adhesive that you're using is the best way. Now, there's two methods to use contact adhesive. It's the dry method or the wet method. The dry method is what you do a lot of laminate bench tops with, where you actually put it on the both substrates, let it tack off so you can put your hand on it, it doesn't get stuck, and then you bond it together. I find when you're using carpet and boards like this, it's a lot easier to do the wet method, where you basically just spatula it on, or if you want to use a tiling trowel, you could use a tiling trowel, but I find a spatula works just as well just to get it on. And then as soon as you've got it on both surfaces, you just bond them together. It's a little bit easier to do that way, and given that we're stapling it all on so it's all nice and taut, you don't have to worry about the dry stick method quite so much because we're pulling it tight and then it will dry like that as well. And my methodology here is usually to have both pieces separate from each other. But I'm going to use the carpet to protect my workbench a little bit here. So I'm actually going to do this piece, move it off to the side, then I can put the contact adhesive on the carpet and then we can bond the two together. It's pretty easy to do. If you take your time, you get a really neat finish. Just focus on these corners and I'll, I'll show you a few tips there, but again, with this carpet, it's really hard. You basically cut it in 45 so that you can sort of get it over the corner, but the worst, anyway, we'll get into that as we go through it. And now it's just a case of spreading the contact adhesive around. You'll actually use a lot more than you think. I used a full tin on that L-shaped floor section that I did, so I had to go and buy another tin of it, which is a little bit annoying. I should have just bought a big tin in the first place, but I don't imagine I'm gonna be doing this Anytime soon, it will go off if you buy too much. So it's a bit of a balancing out there, but just be mindful that you want to buy at least a one litre tin. You don't want to go getting a 500 mil tin because you'll probably use a litre or maybe just over. So that's my tip and trick for doing such a large area like this. And you can only, you might try to put it on sparingly, but it, it sort of goes as far as it can go because of how it spreads around on the board and in particular in the carpet or the material because that tends to soak it in a little bit as well. And I say use a spatula over a tiling trowel where you get the, the notches in it. The, the, the trowel is good when you're doing a dry stick method because you want those lines through that squish down when you bomb both substrates together. When you're doing the wet method like this, it doesn't really matter that much. So it's a lot easier to do with a spatula. So I tend to just scoop a little bit on, looks crazy, and then you just spread it around. You want to work reasonably fast it's quite warm in here today. Try not to get it over the edge like I just did, but I'm trying to make sure I don't block the view, even though this will probably be a time lapse anyway. And I don't know about anyone else, I actually quite like the smell of this, but I used to work at a service station for years and I like the smell of petrol as well. But anyway, there's a little bit of a novelty thing. Try not to get it down the sides too much and make a mess but it's a bit of a messy process, unfortunately. If you've got a big piece of cardboard, that might be worth putting down, just to protect the area that you're working in, or a sheet or something like that. You'll end up getting it all over yourself a little bit. Don't worry too much about the finish of it. You wanna get it reasonably consistent, but it, again, it's pretty hard to do. Uh, you just wanna make sure you don't have any really big blobs around. So just so it can dry reasonably consistently. So we'll move this off to the side, do the carpet now, then we'll just lay it back onto itself and job's done. And then you repeat for the carpet. And you do actually want to get it close to the edge if you can, so that it sticks down all nice and neatly. In my case, I'm trying not to wreck my workbench at the same time.
So you put your board up, try to get it as square as you can, and then just lay it down. Make sure it's all going to work before you stick it, because once it's down, it's not coming back up. I think we're pretty good. There we go. Might be a little bit over to this side, but that's where you want a little bit extra, because when you lay it down, you want to make sure you've got enough that you can work with if it sits a little bit off kilter a little bit. So I'm just going to quickly staple this on while it's all nice and tacky, and then we'll finish the panel off. So what I do is I tend to just pull it over, get one staple in, and on the other piece I probably put too many staples in, so I'd probably keep them around about 8 centimetres to 10 centimetres apart, and that makes sure it's all going to be nicey nice. And again, just for the sake of keeping things tidy, you want to try to have your staples all in a nice line. And then I'll bring you guys in close when we're doing the corners, and hopefully I don't stuff them up. Now I'm probably going to trim this back a little bit, but I'm just tacking it down while it's still a little bit tacky. Just try to get a bit of a bond there. I probably should have done that edge first because that's the bit I want to stick down. I'm going to have some flat bar running around here. I'll get these bits done, then I'll show you one of the other corners, which are the tricky ones, but that's all right. Also I need to go and get a new knife blade. And then you cut the carpet on a 45 degree angle into the corners. Then I like to staple it down and then wrap it back up the other side. Again, staple it into the corner and recut it. And it's just really hard with this stiff carpet to do the corners really, really neatly, but it generally works. And then I put a staple into the corner, which I'll show you just to hold it all together. But that one was actually fairly neat. I should have done that one to show you how to do it. And now if you can see here, it all wants to gather when you get to the corner. So what I tend to do, and I'll do it from the opposite end this time, is you want to find the corner. It's a little bit hard here because we've actually got the radius here as well, but we want to get a sharp knife. It works a lot better than the blunt one I was using before. And cut through on a 45 degree angle. That gets one side stuck down. And then I want to put a staple down as close as I can to the corner to hold it all together. Like so. And then we want to tuck the other corner up and the same thing. We want to staple as close to that 45 as we can. Put another few around it and then cut back. But what you end up with is a little bit of gathering here. If you can, you sort of just squish it in and then I always put a staple across the 45 degree here to hold it all together. And then what we'll do is we'll measure in Chop all this off so it's all nice and neat, and then we'll put our foam down. So again, we just put our knife in here and leave a little bit gathered out because you don't want to cut it down the face where everyone's going to see a big hole. So you, I'd rather have a little bit more fabric or carpet in this instance so that we can sort of gather it together. So I'm going to cut through and I can feel the indent of where the other one was. all pretty neat and then just try to cut the the end off so that we've got something we can work with so I usually just try to fold it in 
And this is where doing the wet contact adhesive method's good and getting the contact adhesive all around the corners. You can sort of glue it down and bond it together so it's fairly seamless around this corner. And again, just to hold it all together, I'll pop a staple in. And that keeps it all nice and tidy. Now I'm gonna cut this in four centimeters, so it's just a case of getting a square and a marker and running around, putting some witness marks on the carpet so we can use a straight edge to cut all this off. And now you wanna get a straight edge or a ruler just to cut this off, again with a sharp knife. Just makes life so much easier. And now how much neater does that look? It's even all the way around. It's a little bit of a nick there, but that's all right. It just makes it look so much more professional when you go through and take your time to trim things off properly, do the corners so they're nice and neat. I could even trim a few of these up a little bit more. And what I probably will do is just put a staple on the top edge of each corner just to hold it all into place. But for now, I'm going to put down a layer of foam and I'll talk to you about why I'm doing that. So what I found when I did the floor originally in the Ranger and when I was just testing things out is because we're wrapping the carpet over and the carpet doesn't really bond or stick to the tray liner itself, it, it tends to move around a fair bit. So I was trying to come up with a solution of something that's a little bit more grippy to actually grip and hold on to that plastic liner. Or if you've got a steel tub, onto the steel floor. And that's because there's actually, you know, there's, there's a ridge here and then there's an empty bit. So you haven't really got that much contact surface onto the tray itself. So I went down to Bunnings and bought this roll of, and I'll put it in the description below, three mil foam. It's got an adhesive back on it. So you simply lay it on, roll it down, and then strip the backing off it. And that actually works really well. It means that the panels, when you put them in the back, grip onto the surface that they're sitting on and it stops things moving around a little bit. And it, even though we're sort of jamming it into the sides, that's that extra contact patch that you really need to keep everything all nice, rigid, and sitting down and not moving while you're traveling around. And by chance, I don't need to cut this down. I simply just put it down into place, stick it down, and then the job's done. So it's just a case of peeling the backing off so we can stick one end down. And just like the carpet, when we stuck it onto the panel, you want to try to get it fairly square, but that's a little bit hard to do. I'm just going to stick it here. I think I'm slightly crooked, but we'll see how we go. Now we're just going to stick it down. I'm just pulling it out a little bit so I can make sure it's going on not too crooked. And just like that, we've got our finished panel. You can tell with this foam, it's, it's got a lot of grip to it as opposed to the carpet. And that actually fills in the indentation you get from wrapping the carpet around. Now what you would normally do is flip this over, get your fridge slide and bolt it down onto the top of your floor. But of course I had to make life difficult and I made a cutout. So I'm gonna quickly show you the solution I came up with there to get the fridge slide sitting down flush on the floor so I could use all the clearance that I had and how it actually clicks in under these floor panels. So as I said, I'm using an Austral fridge slide which suits my particular fridge. It's a real beefy bit of gear and I didn't wanna mess it up and go hacking it to get it to fit in our particular ute. So it took a little bit of thinking about this. The easiest option would have been if I slide this slide forward is there's a number of mounting holes in the bottom of the frame. The easiest solution would have been to drill into the tub, put some rib nuts in and bolt this down. No problem at all. The issue there is that it's pretty much permanently fixed into place. And we want this fairly removable. So you just slide it in, slide it out. It's no drama at all. So I got really thinking about it and came up with quite a neat solution. And that is using some aluminium angle. So I got some 40 by 20 black anodized aluminium angle from Bunnings, just because it's across the road. It makes it a lot easier for me. And cut it so it mitered into this back corner. And then what I've done is I've actually married up 
the actual mounting holes of the slide onto their frame so that I could actually screw my angle using the existing mounting holes and pretty much hardware onto the slide itself. Now that gives me a lip now that slides in under the false floor and keeps it all really nice and tidy. So you can see here I was about positioning it in a way that in my case I could open the fridge with it in the shut position and clear that rear crossbar that I've got running over the top. So once we got it into position it was a case of cutting this section out of the false floor itself so that it could marry in and sit around that. And that's how we ended up with that spare piece that I just carpeted to slide in over the top. Now one thing I'll note with that spare piece if you're looking to do something like this is I did shorten it another five mil and that makes up for all the carpeted sections so it sits in nice and flush. So now what I'm going to do is replicate this onto that false panel that we just made. I've got some black flat bar which will actually screw onto the bottom and the same thing we'll mitre it into the corner so it matches up. So it just will be a flat bar that runs around in the L shape. That'll allow the insert to slot in under the false floor, exactly how this done, so that it all sits nice and level because the worst thing you want is if you put an infill panel in and it's got a slight warp and it kicks up. This will make sure it all sits down nice and flush and it locks the two panels together. So here's my flat bar. I've mitered the ends where they join into the corner and this is the short section so I've just put three holes in it and countersunk them so they can go on. So what I'll do is I'll screw these into place because this is fairly specific to my particular need here and uh, show you what it looks like and then we'll work out how it all goes together. So here's the finished panel. You can see the flat bars that I've screwed in onto the back of it. It's a little bit tricky. I probably should have gone a slightly thicker flat bar. I probably would have gone maybe 50 or 60 if I could find it, but I think it was a thickness that was stopping me because from Bunnings you got a very limited selection. And I wanted the thickness to be roughly the same as the angle I used, but let's test it in and see how it goes. I've got the uh, L-shaped panel sitting in here already. And then the theory is you just flick it in underneath and slide it in. Now this infill is locked in underneath the L-shaped panel. So it holds it all together and it's pretty rock solid to be honest. So that's actually a really good result. I'm happy with that. And now to pull it back out, it's the same as the slide. I'll actually lift the panel up to make it a little bit easier. It slides out and we can stash it away. How good's that? Now one thing I didn't get a chance to do was make a 19mm form ply divider in here. But I'll do that as a separate little project because this video is probably getting a little bit long. I have a habit of talking too much. But anyway, this is pretty much it for the stage one version of our wild track fit out. Now I'm not going to go too crazy with this, but next episode we're going to do a review on a rooftop tent. That's right, all of this is coming off and we're going to put a tub rack on and put a rooftop tent on because Vic Off-Road has sent me a fantastic Sanhima rooftop tent that fits perfectly on the back of the wild track, even with the sailplane here. So I'm going to quickly fit up a tub rack, put that on and do a review on that. Now that is going to open up that solo camping and primitive camping with the boys so much more. We can now carry around a few swags. We've got the rooftop tent and all four of us can camp out of the back of this ute. We're going to keep it very, very simple. That's the idea of this. A very easy setup that you can take pretty much anywhere. And that is the idea of this three part series. Now, if people are interested, I will be fitting a King's rack onto the roller shutter. And there's a little modification you need to do there. And there's some tub reinforcements that you need to do. But anyway, I've got to strip all this down and get that rooftop tent fitted. So I thank you all for watching. And as I always say, get out there, stay safe, have fun, and we'll catch you next time. <music>